So this week, UCAT updated their website with some really important information in light of the new changes that are happening to the exam this year. It's not only going to help you understand where the goalposts are, but it's really important information to help you prepare to get a really good score this year and understand where you're aiming. So in this video, we're going to talk through those changes and help you understand how to apply them to prepare for your exam this year. So before we dive in, you'll notice that I'm in some new scrubs and we have never done sponsored videos on this channel and we are not going to start now. But what we do do is shout outs to good people. So thank you to you, Barney, who not only got me these, but after three years of having skin and hair problems, he sorted them out in just one appointment and completely fixed it. So thank you very much. And if you have any aesthetics or skin needs, I really recommend that you check out his clinic, Derma Consult Skin Specialist in London Bridge. They're amazing people, great vibe, won awards, just really good, go check them out. And if you need anything sorted, they will take care of you. So enough of that, back to the video, let's sort out how we're gonna get you a really good UCAT score this year. So as you may well know, they announced this year that they are changing the way that they do the UCAT. And the finer details of it, I'll put a video in the corner now of the full video where I explain all of the changes, but the biggest one is that they got rid of the abstract reasoning. Why? Because it was the one that people figured out the most and it went from being one that kind of was an average scoring one over the last five years, gradually it became the highest scoring one. So now what they've done here is taken all of the results from all the last 10 years and taken out those abstract reasoning scores so that you can understand what deciles people are in and basically how people performed without those scores. So let's start by looking at what hasn't changed. So firstly, what hasn't changed is the number of people taking the exam. Obviously, this is the same as it has been before they adapted the data. It just shows still though that the number of people sitting in the UK is generally increasing over the years. The verbal reasoning hasn't changed, of course. It is still the lowest scoring. And although it probably has shown, well, when you take away the abstract reasoning, the best improvement, it's still not much and it's still the lowest scoring one and really the hardest one to do well in. Uh, decision making, as always, is stubborn. It's always kind of middle of the road. It always has been and I think it always will be. This is the one, this is almost like the battle grant. You know, in the in the states when they have the voting they have the swing states this is the kind of one that will help people if you can do well on it this is the thing that will separate you from the rest because everybody basically is not doing particularly well on the verbal reasoning and if you're getting you know uh, over a 600 on the verbal reasoning you're doing really well everyone kind of does well on the quantitative reasoning which i'm going to talk about in a minute and I'd say this is the one that has the biggest variance and the biggest difficulty to get through. And also, as you can see here, it's the most stubborn score throughout the years. In, in what is that, five years now, really only a two point difference. And the swing is like eight less and seven more. That's the highest we've ever seen. So it will kind of remain in that, in that way. Now, the quantitative reasoning is an interesting one because it was historically always the highest scoring one. And I still believe that it's the one that people who come in with the worst score when they're starting their UCAT prep can improve. And when we see students on the Future Doc program, this is the one where we see the biggest improvement now that we don't have the abstract reasoning. And it's because understanding the maths and getting quick at maths is a skill, it's a language, the maths is the language and you can just get better and more fluent at it by practice. So understanding how to be efficient um, doing the right sort of drills, they will get you to the stage where you're quick. And, and it's understanding as well what you do and don't need to calculate within the tactics of the exam. You'd have seen the video, I'll put it in the corner now, of the in exam day tactics, what to do on the day of the UCAT. And that is a really useful video to help you understand all of that sort of stuff. But really what's important now is to understand the average total score for that year. So this is the you know the bog standard mean, the middle. Remember, really, if we want to be taking control of our application, we want to be in really the top two deciles. And if you're a grad, I'm going to make some estimations as to where I think you should be if you want to take control of the application. But this is the bog standard average. So we kind of, so remember, we ran the 2,500 mark consistently really for the last few years. It went up to about 2,515, I believe, last year. Um, without looking at the old results but uh, the hit, so it's really interesting to see how much it's gone down by really but what you can see is that the trend again is going up still as that's no surprise even though we've taken away an average chunk out and um, we can we always saw the pattern of the scores going up as the years go on grade inflation does happen it happened in australia where it's ridiculously high now so that is 
understandable and we can expect that. Now I'll come back to the decile rankings uh, later because I was trying to show you the things that haven't changed. So obviously the SJT, no change there, still exactly the same. Really, you still need to be scoring in the top two bands. And a lot of universities will not consider people outside of band three. There are a few that will consider people who've got a band three. So really want to be making sure that you're in that, what's that, about 49%. It's usually about half that end up in the top two bands. And of course, if you can end up in band one, even better. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's have a look at the decile. We said our median score was 1870, so that's where it's going, people are going to be around the middle here, and that's where the normal distribution curve is going to lie around. But what we want to understand is really how we're going to get into what we want here, which is the top, really I would say two bands. With my students, um, the undergrads especially, I'm always saying we need to be in the top two bands. Now I think it's important to understand these numbers because really we need some goalposts to aim for. And again, like I say, Top two deciles is a really good place to start. But what if you really are going for the very competitive universities, you want to stand out, maybe you're a grad and you know how competitive it is and you really want to make sure that you do everything within your power to take control of that application. So what I would recommend is in our Future Doc program, we always aimed for 3,000 before, and it was a bit of an arbitrary number because it's like 83%, but I really did notice a massive difference between those students who got in the 3,000s and below. Now, that's not to say that if you got a 2,950 that you wouldn't almost certainly get an interview, but there were some pretty high cutoffs, and especially for the grads, there are a lot of, there's a, a lot of fierce competition everything that we can do to take control of the application is really important. Now you'll have heard me say the UCAT is not the most important, well it's not the only thing, it's probably the biggest of the really important hurdles which I'll talk about later, but it is not the be all and end all and by just doing well in the UCAT and ignoring the other hurdles you won't get a place, you might get to interview but you won't get past interview and then also if the UCAT isn't, hasn't absolutely, if you've not done amazingly on it but the others are really strong that can still get you a place at a decent medical school so please don't just think that it's all that all the efforts consist of the UCAT because it really is a mistake and a trap that people fall into now what should we aim for so now when we were in the old way of doing the exam it was four sections the maximum score per section was 900 so the maximum total score was 3,600. I've never really seen anybody get a 3,300. So, so really what I'm saying is I've never seen anybody get 92% or above on this test. So if we're taking that 3,000 to 3,300 range out of 3,600, that's the kind of 83%-ish mark, which would correspond exactly to 2,250. So I think that is the new score that people should be aiming for to really separate themselves apart. Of course, by being above 2,170, as it says here, yes, you will be in the top 10%. That's the definition of these deciles. But I think really to take control, we want to be in that top 5%, which I'm predicting. And this is just me using my crystal ball. And you'll have seen from my previous predictions when I've done these, they have always been pretty accurate but I think the 2250 mark is a really good one to think about now really that goes to talk about how we prepare for this now again it's really important that we are doing well in all the sections that goes without saying but really how are we going to prepare for the verbal reasoning how are we going to make sure that we separate ourselves in that battle section that is the decision making and how are we going to make sure that we get the quantitative reasoning score that helps separate us because again these are small margins and especially now that we've narrowed the number of sections the small incremental differences between so as you can see it does make a big change in the score that we're aiming for and how we're going to prepare because those three sections that remain are a lot tougher to score higher so we need to make sure that our preparation is on point to get the score that we need to get into our first choice or any medical school or dental school for that matter but I urge you to remember that the UCAT is not the be all and end all of your medical or dental school application yes it is an important hurdle and probably arguably the biggest hurdle Hurdle, but still there are four other really key hurdles that you must nail and can either make up for a not great score or just a great score by itself will not get you into medical or dental school if these other elements aren't in place so it's so important that you check them out and if you'd like to find out more about what, what those elements are and how you can optimize them and if you would like our help on the future doc program where we get ridiculous success
success rates with people getting into medical and dental school, check out that video there and find out exactly what you need to do to optimize your application. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video.